Good morning and a happy Wednesday, I'm told. I did think it was Thursday <laughs> this morning. So oh, once man. again, we're not clear what century or date or time or country we're in. I'm Roth Cornette, Andy Signore, Spencer Gilbert, Dan here, here. Murrow. Hello. Welcome. We have a good show for you today. We're going to talk about Dark Phoenix. Yeah, <laughs> that's why we all had low energy this morning. Oh, man. Not a great news day. It's fine. Yeah. Look, it's not the well. Proceed, Russ. Well, we're going to we're gonna talk about Joss Whedon and a little update there on Justice League. We've also got a new Walking Dead Pokemon Go style game that I Weird. want your thoughts on. It's very important for me to understand how you think about that. But first, let's talk about this. Simon Kinberg, who is the director, writer, and producer of Dark Phoenix um, has talked to Total Film and he said that here's what he's looking to do. Quote, find a way to ground it so it's not too intergalactic. The hmm. only reason that's confusing for us, <laughs> Simon, um, let's talk about this a little bit, Spencer. Who's the villain in this film? Well, the according to reports, uh, it's Jessica Chastain playing Lilandra, Empress of the Shi'ar. But <laughs> no, that's how you're meant to say it every single time. Empress Shi'ar, of the Empire. Shi'ar. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be like a really, you know, grounded character based, <laughs> like, like in style, very, rooted in like real honest yeah. emotional stakes about the Empress of the Shi'ar. Yeah, that's the thing. Like this is fighting the Dark Phoenix. How is it's the wor- the fact that he even just didn't say grounded? Because maybe he meant, oh, you know, it's. It will find a way to find what's relatable about her, but no, he said not in inc- not too intergalactic. But that's what's stupid about this. Hate movies that are too cosmic. Yeah, don't go too. Like, go yeah. nuts, yeah. right? Either, either do like a character movie about Jean Grey and like the Dark Phoenix and stuff like that, or do the Dark Phoenix writ large in like an insane space opera style. But don't have one foot in each camp. It feels to me um, from this quote, and Andy, what do you think? It feels like there's maybe already a little bit of an identity crisis. And to your point, Dan, I think we were all hoping with the success of Guardians, like, just go just for it. Just tell your story. <laughs> like, not even Guardians. It's like, how many movies do you have to see succeed? And how many movies do you have to see su- the, the comic movies that are playing it safe are failing. And the ones that have the balls to actually take a risk and tell an interesting story are succeeding. And it's like, it's it, it, Hollywood can just be just... So I don't, I, I, don't, I couldn't work like as a producer or an it's just it's like it takes five years for anyone to react to anything except for the bad stuff. Right, uh, and only ten things get made and reacted to. And yeah, that's the other problem. I mean, what I'm stuck on is like we've done this already, and we're coming off of apocalypse, which to me was a failure. I know it had like sort of mixed emotions with some people, but. That movie was not good enough. The movie was a mess. And I feel like to now say, oh, well, let's bring them all back and try and do the Phoenix right. It's like, we've seen, I, first of all, they did it fantastic on the X Men animated series. Mm-hmm. They completely botched it with Brett Ratner's version of The Last Stand, which apparently came in last minute to try and save. Um, it just reeks of desperation in a way. Like, if you're going to try and keep this X Men thing going, like, try something different or try something new or reset it again and, or give it some time. I just, this screams of laziness. But if sort sadly, of, if you remember Apocalypse, uh, the Dark Phoenix like is the climax of that movie. Yeah. Is introducing that thread out, out of nowhere, nowhere. Out of nowhere. Uh, right. assuming that you you really have to know the comics to know what the hell is going on at the end of that. And so clearly, this has been in the works for a long time. They can only course correct so much, like you said. Dan takes them forever to react, but like they've got this cast, they've committed to multiple movies, and they set up the Dark Phoenix in the last one. So they got to follow through on that. Yeah, it's, I just, thought their contracts were up though after that. Now well, that they've re-upped, just correct? So, yeah, just so that you know, this it's everyone's everyone's back on this one. We got James McAvoy, we got Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence is back, Nicholas Holt, Alexandra Ship, and of course Sophie, Sophie Turner as Jean Grey is returning. But there's a, there are a couple of different problems. Yeah, does this feel like it's the last stand all over again, where you're sort of doing the story, but you're not really committing to doing the story? In a way, it's worse. Because, and I'm I'm not saying that this has to be, like, every adaptation has to be exactly what the comic book storyline is. However, the thing that made the Dark Phoenix storyline so compelling to so many readers and that has made it one of the iconic storylines is that it is a story of sacrifice mm-hmm. and love. Love story, and, yep. and built on particularly this backstory between these two characters of Cyclops and Jean Grey. It is a tragic love story at its heart. And... We, we barely know this Jean Grey. 
we barely Cyclops said like eight words, and yeah. I mean they barely introduced it. And so really now quick, it's this thing. Who's Cyclops? Who's playing Cyclops? James Marsden? No, no, no. <laughs> said, yeah, Marsden. Uh, right, Ty Sheridan. Ty Sheridan. That's right. But Ready it's Player One. But it's this idea of like, okay, even if it's not going to be based off of Cyclops, like the story is compelling because it is based off of existing relationships between characters that you care about. And again. It, to me, if you're this, obviously can't be based on that because Jean Grey has no connection to the audience or really to We've any of the other characters her, in this yeah. movie. We just met her. She's already the Dark Phoenix. And so she's to, to the me, Dark this Phoenix. is going to be apocalypse, sandblasting, uh, yeah. London again. It's going to be all. It's going to be Dark Phoenix, and then it's going to be big fiery flames and things. Right. Catching Wait, you oh, for Jean, we care about you suddenly, even though we yeah. just spent twenty but minutes forgot, trying to make you care. About shoehorn in Jennifer Lawrence debating whether she's good or bad again. She'll right. have a big speech to talk her down. Off the ledge. Yeah, what does Magneto have to right. do with it? Magneto has nothing to do with this storyline. They're gonna. It's like it's. It is. It's X Men in particular is so frustrating because it shows these little flashes of promise. You get X Men Two or Days of Future Past, and then they just like Charlie Brown it and just goop and just, just fall <laughs> deeper into the same hole that they already fell down. Well, that, you can preach, I, but I, I think that's that, why the, the cartoon worked because you got you got to spread them out and have more yes. time and tell different stories, and each yeah. character got their own arcs. And I, I agree completely. This Are should they still be, doing the decade This jump should be thing? like an HBO show. The X Men universe should be taken Legion style, whatever. Like do the do the the longer form versions where you can get more focus on character and give them the, the time to do it. And there's so many wonderful characters. But I 100 percent agree to fit all these characters in mm. two hours. They're gonna have to tell all these stories that are gonna be disconnected. It's gonna not make the Jean Grey uh, sort of moments strong enough, and it's gonna be another wash. I, I will two things. I want to apologize to you guys that we have not yet. Created a Dan Rant graphic. We really failed like an out. in that regard, but we're on it as of today. I, I think the almost other really sad part is that they earned that relationship with the other Jean Grey and Cyclops. You know, I think mm -hmm. people, at least at that time in particular, were really invested in that relationship, and then it just sort of. Well, to be yeah. fair, didn't they matter have... when it played out, and that's the sad part. To be fair, they have almost an entire year to uh, finish writing, shoot, and edit this based on the release date. Would you so, like to say you know. something to Simon Kimber if he's listening? No. Take time. <laughs> you said enough. Call no. us. Poor guy. Uh, yeah, we have some great ideas for how you can further dilute the Quicksilver running around <laughs> to a pop song thing. I think you should play a Tamagotchi this time. It's yeah. just really interesting because, again, um, Fox is, is so fascinating to watch right now because they're getting it so right when they hone in and they focus on these characters and, to your point, allow them to be what they are and just tell that story. And then it just seems like soup. When they when they put them all together, but we have hopes maybe this will be good. Mm. Look, that, a little like, confusing. Deadpool, Logan, all worked. I mean, I, I, new Mutants is interesting. That could be a, that could be an interesting new take to try and take sure. us somewhere else. But I, I think the, the X Men movies are are a mixed bag, if you will. And it's like they it's a hard one to give up. I get it. I, I like those characters. I want to see those characters continue, but I don't think they fully understand how to how to they, they want the marvel universe but then they don't know how to tell it's it's all very confusing i, I wish they would almost take more with they, i wish they would have learned more from logan mm -hmm. and given us more and interesting Deadpool. standalone stories mm -hmm. with these characters versus like gotta put them all back in a movie like i feel like apocalypse should have taught them something of like yeah it's not really that big of a thing if you don't really make sure it's really great yeah. It's just it's so frustrating because it's like I love I mean like I Batman first for me when I was a kid when the Batman movie came out I love Batman and Superman and then it was X Men and it's like it, it, it the X Men stories are in a way the most relatable stories across all of comics they're the most tied to the real world they're the most tied to real world issues they're the easiest to like tie into what's actually happening in the world and make you feel compassion for those characters because they're persecuted. It's not like Batman and Superman. They're persecuted and they're and they have to hide and they're, you know, they're it's they're they're, they're innately sympathetic. And just to see so many times over the studios to suck every little bit of interest out of those characters is like, what are you doing? It's like it's not even you're making them worse. You're, it's, it's, how? I can't how wait for the happen? sponsored BuzzFeed article. It's like, why Leandra of the Shi'ar is like Trump and, and Sophie Turner is Bay Clinton. I know, right? Is <laughs> Bay Clinton. I don't read BuzzFeed very much. No, that sounds about right. Yeah. Okay, new segment. 
Spencer does BuzzFeed. Yeah. And we just try to ask Spencer, imagine what a BuzzFeed headline might actually be and see what he comes up with. I want to watch that. But to be fair, look, as you said, they have a year to course correct this. We don't know. We haven't read or seen anything. But I, I think... This whole Dark Phoenix, 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 the Dark Phoenix saga being sort of where they're going. And this this quote gets me concerned. Yeah. Well, we'll see. In other comic book news, Joss Whedon has an official writing credit on the Justice League. Now, before he said he was just coming in to sort of tweak things and do the in-between bits of the movie, <laughs> um, sort of the, the sections that tie everything together. It's interesting and notable that he has now been giving official writing credit on it. Um, right, and the rumor, the, I was just curious to see if they were gonna have to give him a co-director credit, but it sounds like that's not happening yet. Yeah. That that doesn't, that hasn't happened yet. So that that is where it's kind of interesting. Like, why have they decided to give him a writing credit and not a co-director credit? Probably on credit? a lot of money, Yeah, I would guess. Well, and the DGA, I know, in the past, has been very, very difficult to, to secure co-directing credits. I remember, like, Robert Rodriguez, uh, I think, resigned in protest because they wouldn't give, I think, Tarantino co-directing credit on Sin City because mm-hmm. he came, they have, to, they have to do a guest director. There's people that have resigned because they won't like, like it's so hard. You almost have to be related to get <laughs> co-directing credit from the DGA. So I wonder if that played into it because there are all these union things about like they just don't like to have two credited directors on a movie. Sure, but I mean, it's, it's just, and look, why do you want a writing credit if you're Joss Whedon? Does it really matter? Everyone that needs to know what you're doing on this movie knows what you're doing on this movie. This is all I'm saying is that this came up previously in a video. I was saying, well, like all movies have multiple writers on them. And, and someone came in a comment and said, this is the, I think it was Terry, I was the only writer. That's not true ever. There are always, always multiple writers on these movies, particularly these big movies. They are just not credited. Right. Like, well, look, I'm, I mean, I'm talking someone out of my even, ass. But I know I f- someone that wrote on Hidden Figures and isn't credited. Yeah, but I, f- I think that the guilds like the WGA do look at the scripts. There's like a panel that checks like this draft and this draft and is like, yeah, you contributed a lot. You're a writer on this. Sure. It's depending. Per- well, there's also ghostwriting. I mean, it depends on who you are. So Joss Whedon is that person mm-hmm. that that would be done for. But if it's something like, say, and the reason I brought up Hidden Figures, because if it's something that's, say, going to eventually maybe be nominated for some kind of awards, particularly around writing, maybe you really care and you want that credit because you want to you don't want that to come out later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that I, mean, fight. I think you're right. But I think it's usually sort of the negotiation of the agents and the writers. Right. I'm sure a lot of people come in to ghostwrite or are asked to write and help a script that then get paid versus get the credit so they can sure, keep it contained. Yeah, yeah. So I think that does happen a lot it yeah. does. that people are aware of. Or and if they're not, they obviously fight and the DGA, WGA goes after yeah. it. In this case, though, I just feel like is this is a weird spot for Whedon to be in. He doesn't want to just take the credit. I mean, Snyder left, obviously, in heartbreaking, awful reasons. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like I feel like if he didn't take something it would be odd in a way because he's he's creatively yeah. involved now so i can see this as sort of a, a fair like all right give me the writing credit Not the i'll step in credit. i helped and that's fine mm-hmm. I, I don't need it i mean it doesn't it doesn't read me wrong i don't know if you guys think otherwise well this is from the warner brothers fall um preview and so i think that you're right that perhaps that is sort of it that they just compromise in that way let's talk about some of the things that he has said rumored to have changed in the film he's rumored to have changed the end of the film so that it's not setting up a dark side and that it's now just strictly a standalone story that's a rumor i'm not sure if that's true and then of course it's been rumored that he was coming in to lighten it up lighten up the tone so who knows how and big the connective tissue of the movie and, the and scenes to, between the big action set pieces <laughs> so the movie right and to do, <laughs> so well that's the, what he said to have directed all the words mm-hmm. yeah uh, the, yeah and lightning the tone is specifically cyborg's character which you could sort of see in the trailer like he's definitely like there to almost give comic relief yeah mm. so do you, like Dan, in a serious drax sort of way mm. yeah. yeah do you feel like so then is to your point the words uh, <laughs> is that sort of why that's the compromise like well we'll give you credit for the writing but the directing is really about the set pieces uh, yeah i mean i think it's which is it's it, joss whedon's in a strange position particularly with the direct if he come in to rewrite that'd be one thing but with directing like if you take that directing credit that's i, I don't know if you, i, would, I, don't I know if i'd want, want it to. to be honest because the circumstances are just so beyond the business and yeah. so beyond superhero movies like for, if i'm joss whedon i don't even know if i would want to no neither would you know, i know it's like he's stepping in seems tasteless a, a little bit to be like i want credit yeah. for this <laughs> however if he is 
you know, writing things that are dr- drastically or, you know, somewhat fundamentally changing yeah. the nature and the tone of the movie, I could see, you know, maybe not even asking for it. I could see Warner Brothers saying like, hey, listen, you obviously are stepping into direct and that is, and we appreciate you coming in under these circumstances and we're going to recognize this work that you did. We know that these have been extensive reshoots beyond the scope of the usual. Um, and so if he is, if he's particularly on the writing side, if he's contributed a lot to the movie, sure. I mean, I the mean, other one to throw at him, if I'm sure that that was, I, this had to have been negotiated before it happened. Like no way the agents and whatnot didn't like line up what he gets. And I'm sure there was a lot of money, but it's like the other, I figured he would get a producing credit if he didn't already get that too. Cause that sort of then gives him back end, uh, whatever pieces yeah. that then makes yeah, him seem right. like he's part. And I wouldn't be surprised if that comes later too. Credit, yeah. And that way he's a writer producer on the movie and just helped step in when Zach left. I feel like, Sort of and he gets to problem. make like Batgirl, right? Or which yeah. is the one he wants to make? Batgirl. Batgirl. Yeah. And, and that, that was the other thing in the total deal. I am wondering about that. Like who knows what he has in terms of the financial package, but the package also includes that movie. Mm-hmm. It's like in meaning that contract, not necessarily, maybe, I'm not sure, but I think it's probably separate. But it, his relationship with Warner Brothers includes that movie and certain things that he may have wanted for that in terms of creative control and so forth. I'm not sure. I'm just speculating. Um, but it's it's an it's an interesting development to some degree. You know what else is interesting? I'm getting excited for the movie, though, because I, it does, regardless of who's involved, it looks like they really are taking time to, to figure it out and do things with it. So that's always encouraging. I, I feel like reshoots is sort of that weird, like, oh, oh, the movie's bad. But, you know, Marvel has admitted that, that they scheduled those in already now to make sure because it's like if you've ever edited a project you always know once you're in the edit like crap we could have done that better we missed this or we missed that so to see them taking these so seriously means they're listening i would hope and so it doesn't mean it we don't know yet but i'm, I'm encouraged at least to see that they are yeah. like really taking it seriously and acknowledging and sort of trying to adjust and tone things and sort of make yeah. sure i like the rumor that he made it into a standalone that's yeah. very these are, these are reassuring. good things yeah that is that is my favorite idea too it's like the tone is going to be what it is yeah. you just hope that it feels like a cohesive tone throughout the film whatever the tone is commit to it and and I mean, I don't, you don't have to be so stringent. There are things like dark comedies and stuff like that. Ingrid Goes West, very good, in theaters now. Um, and then there's I, a- There's cool- no way Zack Snyder's not gonna watch a cut at some point and just give thoughts. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So it's like, sure. the tone will match between them. It's like, yeah. I, he, I, don't, I, I don't even wanna think what Zack's going through and all that, but it's like, there's gonna be a point in four months, whatever, when's this, November? He's still got November, time to yeah. sort of just watch a cut and be like, hey, great, or, yeah. do this I, I would think so i would think they're gonna marry or if he hasn't already shared those notes to sort of make sure that tone stays together but yeah it'll be interesting to see how it goes um everybody wants a good movie and reshoots to your point and we've talked about this before are not a bad thing they are a very standard thing and sometimes can mean that corrections are being made um you know did you guys play pokemon go no nope. for that hot minute for the minute that it was a thing <laughs> Did you really play brought Pokemon people Go? together no, though? I did not. Got brought people outside. Yeah. yeah, I remember being on like the train to San Diego, trying it, and there were just eight people there, and I didn't understand, so I just asked a stranger, and they like talk. We like, oh, cool, and just so I, I admired that a little bit, but man, that seemed like that was got boring real fast. It will. Yeah. Do you know what it actually seemed like to me? And I feel like they should dissect this in business schools because I feel like it was actually one of the most wasted opportunities for Pokemon. Like they had this phenomenon that they just couldn't predict was going to be as a big a phenomenon as as it was, and then couldn't react quick enough to capitalize on it um, in a lot of, they, they just sort of released, they didn't release it, they had that big panel at Comic-Con, do you guys remember? Oh, yeah. And didn't do and anything. Just, had didn't nothing. do anything. Well, they, weren't, they didn't know it was going to be a know. worldwide phenomenon. Well, they couldn't predict it. That was just going to be a semi-popular semi. uh, mobile game. And yeah, it was like that month that it came out and they already had a, I think they got like late addition to Comic-Con for a big Hall H panel and they had nothing new yet because these things take a lot of time to develop and program, especially when there's millions of people using it at the same time yeah well you know who does want to capitalize on opportunities for cash amc sure that network that loves money so much like who doesn't wait so amc um, is doing it so amc announced that on tuesday Not a that skybound well it says amc announced on okay. tuesday that um well skybound do you mean because the of comic. the rights issue yeah is it the mm. comic or the show so it's the show okay got it yeah um that's launching an augmented reality location-based <laughs> Um, is that it? The Walking Dead Our World, oh, Jesus. which is set to launch on the iPhone and the iPad and then later on Android devices. <laughs> that's not... um, so this is going to be similar <laughs> yeah, to Pokemon Go. That's the reality. Go. That's the reality <laughs> this is going to be well, similar to Pokemon Go, and you can basically kill and fight walkers. walkers. 
Get walkers. your walkers. I mean, look, this is brilliant. Because and you can play. Mm. Is it? Yes, gonna, I'll explain when she's finished. It's going to feature fan favorite characters. This is Bruno. Tell us why. It's, I want to know why you love well, it. Well, look, it's brilliant. Walking be- Dead fans. It's brilliant because they're getting on this trend quickly because everyone's <laughs> missing out on this trend, and this trend is going to be a massive trend. Which, if you've seen like the Apple keynotes and stuff, this augmented reality feature is amazing. And so I think if they can capitalize on it first, it's brilliant. Whether the game ends up being something worthy for long periods of time, who knows? But the, literally, if I'm uh, gathering it is, you're going to put your phone up and you're going to see zombies in the room and you're going to be taking out the zombies. Like, that's cool. Like, there's going to be a zombie in front of Spencer and I can kill it. And it's like, to be able to walk around and get the zombie, like, to do that is a fun, I just think is yeah, a fun just game. Just what I want is more people Spencer's. staring through me and at their phone. That's well, exactly that's what issue. I want in this world. I don't disagree with you at all, but from a, just a step back from a business side of making a, a killing on a game, like, that's going to do so well. People are going to have uh, some The gameplay is well. going to suck, just like Pokemon Go. You're going to hold up your thing, you're going to press the button, it's going to so say, do you want to buy crush. more bullets for two ninety? Do you want to call Daryl for three ninety nine? What does Daryl say to us when we call? Carol's not here. Yeah, Carol's not here, but Daryl is. I need more arrows. Four ninety nine. I need more arrows. Buy, buy more, more gems arrows, to turn Daryl. into coins to I'll turn into arrows. I'll smolder in for you if you buy me arrows. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, Pokemon had the nostalgia factor going, and like that's what the the, the original Pokemon's were about was going around and you know. Uh, collecting them all, which is what you did in Pokemon Go, which is like a different aspect to it. Walking Dead, it's about walking. If it was a walking thing where you got points for walking around. Oh, I'm sure you will. You'll get kill, you'll get points for killing certain wait minute, walkers. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's pitching a very important exercise game right There's now. There's an amazing said, app where you run and you have your headphones on, and if you run too slow, zombies get closer to you. You hear the moans of zombies chasing you, so you have to speed up, and then they get quieter. That sounds like it could make heart attacks happen. <laughs> <laughs> or or great mile app? times. I forget what it's called, but that would be a cool Walking Dead thing. I like that. It's so, some sort of exercise app. <laughs> but yeah, but doing Pokemon Go where you just like tap, 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 tap when you're in line at the grocery store, which is the realistic take on it, is mm-hmm. eh. You're, you're right. right. Uh, augmented reality is going to be cool. It's not there yet. No, look, I don't think this is the best thing they're going to do, but I think because there hasn't been a lot of really good ones yet, if they can crack it and it's I, when I go to... Go to Comic Con and beat the Comic Con zombies for extra points, or go to whatever to to beat them for extra oh, points. Like Christmas, now they have the Santa hat people, on. People, people, I think will have fun with it. It'll be because it's new. It's like Avatar 3D. Everyone's oh my god! Like this augmented reality thing is amazing. Like if, if seeing what they can do, like it just scans the room and knows the tabletops and your walls, and then it immediately adds their animations to it, so you can literally be anywhere. Like Are you a this gamer? is going to change the world. I think you the augmented, know what I call augmented reality. Yeah, reality. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing better than what is actually happening in the room in front of you. It's like people that record concerts on their phone and yeah. watch a concert like this. It's like, Let's do you know Buddha. the band Dude, is actually Buddha standing in front of you. We're all going right? to the Oasis, Dan. It's all yeah. happening. No. Mm-hmm. No. no. Ready Player One. No, thank no. you. <laughs> I mean, there's a time credits. and a place. There's a time and a place, but it's just like, I, I just, it, it, it felt like Black Mirror when Pokemon Go was going, because I would walk down the street. Oh, we're in Black I, Mirror. Just, <laughs> everyone that I passed. It's like there are human beings standing there, but they're just over here. Well, people are like driving and jumping around. Oh, yeah. There, there are people who died yeah. for that. People yeah, died. exactly. Really and it's like, like no, really. let's, like, not, let's not blur the lines between reality and gameplay any more than they're already blurred because it's getting a little scary for me. Okay. Like I feel like let's let's not just kind of mash our world together even more than it is. Plus, oh. I'm with Spencer. It's going to be super frustrating to play because you're going to get the free version and you'll be able to <laughs> click, kill like three zombies a day unless you pay for the elite package for fifteen dollars, which will unlock seven other unlockable. It's money. like Super Mario Run, whatever. Yeah. It's like ah, oh, I'm not buying into the next world. What the, all mobile games do is they're just there to hook you to pay more money. Yeah. I mean, it's, we're, it's, we're a, it's a form towards... of gambling. It is like yeah, I really, really believe is. it. Like, yeah. It's all a game. Go ahead. Being conditioned. No, no, no. Uh, you go. You're a game. You're. Do you play games? I mean, I, I remember getting addicted to Candy Crush. Did anyone else fall, mm-hmm. or even yeah, like Words with Friends, and fall into that trap? Because I feel like once you get the add-ons, it just that's what they're there for—to just make you keep playing it. You are the biggest gamer, right? Sure, of the group, 
right? I, I mean, I, I think know. you are not definitely. mobile, not, not, but not, not mobile. Games. You don't like that's what I find interesting. Like you're a medium, you play. Well, my them kid is really into them right? now. Like he just he somehow sneaks the phone away, and I try not to. You have to police how much yeah. time you have your kids on the phone. At the same time, you need sometimes to, to put away groceries, and they don't they don't say no. But he <laughs> he'll find them and and sort of. So I, now I have to get back into like learning. What do you what? No, stop. Because they because I'll download an app that he approves, and then they'll have ads that I can't turn off that make him want to buy the next one. It's like um. that. It's like it's a. I hate it, and I'm like starting to take it more and more away because I think they know it's like these people who are addicted to the games, or it's kids and don't know better, and just hit the button that says buy. And a lot of people are just getting charged, charged, charged for stuff no one needs or wants. Mm -hmm. So if we were a focus group, this is how I would assess this: hardcore gamers not as interested because the gameplay isn't interesting. Walking Dead fans that are medium level, Candy Crush players are good, and that's actually a much larger market. Yes, um, curmudgeons, curmudgeons are not like in us. <laughs> <laughs> are like stop the fucking madness pardon hey. me sorry oh, wow. <laughs> I'm, i am I'm, i mean i really am like turning into a neo luddite kind of because i'm just like the world's gone crazy you're like it's enough you, you say as you're live streaming to the internet <laughs> on your livelihood yeah i mean we can talk about that topic for, <laughs> for Don't hours up my hypocrisy. <laughs> i am perfectly comfortable with my human human humanity hypocrisy I, we are all have those contradictions but it, and i'm on my phone more than i should be and i do think it's an addiction and i do think it's probably something that's not helping my relationships my real in irl Amen. relationships yeah. mm. it's not helping my brain it's certainly not helping my sleep you know so no I and, and it's all making us be worser people we re overreact yes. to things we jump to things it's we're out of real we're life turning into monsters. we are it's like, like it, 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 it is actually quite scary control. i think the phone really is turning because it's like look it's a cut yeah it, but I, I totally agree and i i've literally have noticed and the most recently of like you got to turn the phone off you yeah. got to put it away at night and you, you got to if you don't it's gonna make you a worse person and there is a real world that people are depressed our direct attention yes. in right so now. many ways right now <laughs> yes. to not be wrapped let's up not in eat at each other and yeah, let's, yeah, uh, let's let's help each yeah. other. I agree, and I think it's translating a little bit into our reality, the behavior, the online behavior, which is not considered civil behavior, and we've allowed to flourish, and and we we've allowed we, to yeah, we've all been guilty of being too doing definitely. Yeah, yeah. We all have. We're all guilty of that, but it certainly has, I think, entered our how we interact as human beings and it kind of just oppresses you and it kind of makes you think that the world is a very dark place in a lot of ways because if you can't even go on to a gardening article without like <laughs> horror shows and the, the, you know everyone's gotta I, get that click do you saying. like daisies here's why they'll all be dead <laughs> yeah it's just like <laughs> Y'all sound like some serious olds right now. You really do. <laughs> I heard a story. Old. My friend depressed me last night. Can I tell a random story? He said they now, because I, 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 he told me they're, they're tearing beetles into robots now. What? Because he's gone vegan, which I'm exploring. If you have good vegan suggestions, tell me. Uh, but he's. I'm thinking about doing Yeah, vegan. I am. Because I they're, they're, uh, uh, watch What the Health. Uh, uh, anyway. But apparently you can take a that. beetle and it's cheaper to just put a neur neuron like wire on yeah. a real beetle and make it walk around and completely turn off its body than to make a robot beetle to go do the same exercise? That's weird, right? I'm just gonna stop us because <laughs> why do you need a robot beetle? In I mean, the first so place? many questions. No, and then ethics of like, do you want to save the beetle or do you I not care about the beetle? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'll replace the beetle with human and that's gonna be 10 years. Beetle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What? So this is in order to save the beetle population? No, like they send the to do missions or to send the, the robot. The yeah, apparently, I, I got to get more information. I, I heard this last night. If someone help me figure out this is. But how weird is that? Apparently there are little like neon little be you know robots that they can make, but, but they quickly realize are... it's cheaper to turn a real beetle no. into the robot than make a robot. But I, I just what's the mission what's though? The mission? I don't know. I, that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I argued him because he's all. I'm like, well, then Ant Man is also a terrible person, isn't he? Because he's he controls. Ants. Yeah. I, I had him there. I just want us to understand that the issue certainly I will find is out that, more and if it's interesting we'll bring it back. Cyborg beetles is worse than robot beetles, but I think the core issue that we really need to get at is what are the beetle missions? Why What's you your in? beetle mission? What what you the beetle do? Hashtag <laughs> SJU Live. All right. I'm on terrified now. Hashtag yeah. beetle mission. This is a promise and I mean it because I gotta know. On tomorrow's SJU, I will have found out what the Beatles are on a mission for and why we yes, need we all robot Beatles it. in the first place. And, uh, we will, and we will, is it right or wrong? And is it right or wrong to have cyborg Beatles? The answer is no. Do not augment cyborgs. Unless it's Beatles, Beatles, Beatles cyborg. cyborg. 
Beatles, right. as in John Lennon and <laughs> oh. uh, George Harrison. Yeah, I would watch that. Yeah. Yeah. I would watch. I would watch a band of cyborgs. Ringo Beatles. Paul and two cyborgs. And yes. what about the hologram concerts? Oh. Speaking of the madness, yeah. the hologram right, concerts. No. And they just developed. They just developed a tech where you could take if somebody has a nudge footage of them like they did this they made a fake obama video that really looks like he's giving like you yesterday off, yeah. on um, judgment day <laughs> yeah uh, we had none of these fun we had facts a whole thing. could have talked about cyborg beetle missions oh, there's man. so much that i want to talk about with like how technology right, is we, terrifying let's find it. we'll do it tomorrow starting with the cyborg beetles and what mission they are headed on um you let us know in the comments below cyborg beetles thanks for joining us today i i andy Thanks, Where were Evan. you this morning when I was getting stories? <laughs> Let's know what you think of the dark Venus, though, in the in the Dark Venus. <laughs> dark Venus. Uh, bye. This is yeah.